Hello there. So one of the things I like about making presentations or writing articles or books is that you can really crystallize your knowledge, actually learn what you don't know. And also, well, you come up with these weird ideas which you never thought before because you need to explain something to the audience and then you start thinking, is that really the case? So. I had a moment like that when creating my zip slides for the talk which I had in Ingolstadt in Germany last week. And uh, well, the slides are actually available on my blog if you want to check them out. I will be redoing this presentation on my live stream on the 9th of May. So if you missed it, don't worry about it. It will be available online. Um, and yeah, so the slide was actually this one. It was about, well, files and directories, something uh, an obvious concept that both can be stored in a zip archive. And um, well, the minor difference between them is that you can actually distinguish them by an attribute, which is in one of the um, bytes in the um, central directory header for a given entry in the zip archive. Now, what I thought here while making the slides is like, what if I create a file, actually a zip file, which contains a normal file, a text file, a binary file, or whatever, and flip this bit, what will be the behavior of, you know, the archive browsers or unpackers? This is a minor thing. I don't expect any security bugs here, but stuff like that actually always makes me curious, like what will be the actual behavior? Because this isn't something when you would read and the documentation of the zip format that comes directly to mind. Like for example, check that the directory doesn't have any data. So yeah, let's check that out. And um, to do that, I'm going to zip this file. This file contains only, well, doesn't contain too much. This is a text file and that's about it. So I'm going to zip it using shuttle commander. That's alt F5. Here we go. And this is a normal zip file which contains the text. The text, as you can see, is uh, of this size 21 bytes. And now I need to open it with a hex editor. So I'm going to use hex workshop for this purpose. Here we go. Because hex workshop actually does understand the zip format, I can go to this header. This is actually uh, this is the local file header, this is the, well, the beginning of a local file header structure, this is the beginning of a central directory entry, and this is the end of a central directory entry. Um, I actually know the zip format really well, so mm, yeah, don't worry if, if you get lost here. However, I can now add a structure, which is the central directory header, and, well, change the attribute. So to change the attribute, I need to look up this field, external file attributes, and it's 32 now, or 20 in hexadecimal. I'm going to change it to 16 because 16 is the attribute of a DOS directory. So let me do just that. 16, save, and that's it. Now let's see how Total Commander, for example, behaves. Will it say that, oh, this archive is actually corrupted? Or will it do something else? So as you can see, it actually shows a directory which has a certain size, which is pretty unusual. Um, well, you might be thinking now, it's not really unusual if you have a directory in, under Linux, it will show sizes. Let's uh, check it out. I need to actually start a Linux console, I guess, to do that. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, and if we do ls-la, we can see that uh, some directories do have a size. And this is related to the fact that, well, a directory is basically a list of the files, right? And the list of the files need to be stored somewhere. And yeah, well, Linux by default shows the size of that list. In this case, basically the list takes two blocks, which are of, um, well, four kilobytes each. Now, um, in case of an archive, I guess it's uh, it doesn't make any sense for a directory entry to have any data associated with it, but that's the case here. Let's see what um, other programs say. For example, Windows Explorer, if we enter the archive, we see we don't see any size at all. It doesn't show any size. It says that it's a folder and therefore it doesn't show any size, which is quite cool. It, it's actually, I guess, a steganography trick, a really simple one. One idea is to write a a script which actually looks for all the zip archives on your hard disk, which uh, do 
um, which do contain some data associated with it. It would be a, an interesting experiment. I'm going to do just that later. Let me open it with 7-zip and 7-zip goes even further. It says that the size, Rozmiar means size in Polish. My apologies for the, um, not, not an English version. Anyway, um, yeah, zero. Well, we know it's not zero. We know there is data associated with it, so that's pretty weird. We can also check in RAR, I guess. Open with WinRAR. Here we go. WinRAR correctly says that there is 21 bytes there. So at least that's something. Now, I'm pretty curious how much, uh, sorry, how what will be the difference in other zip reading applications? I only showed a few here, and this is actually my request to you. I'm going to post a download link to this text file, to this exact zip file in, well, in the description of this video. If uh, you could check it out in different programs and let me know what is the behavior. Does it show the size? Does it maybe say that there is data associated with it? Or maybe does it not display the size or say the size is zero? Or maybe it says that the archive is actually corrupted. So um, please check it in various applications which you might have and I don't. And uh, let me know in the comments. And yeah, that's it today. Just a simple steganography trick. So thank you and see you next time.